Hey, Jody here. Thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I picked up some aluminum cleaner the other day at my local welding supply for this project. I don't think it helped a whole lot, but I decided to try it. I wiped it down with Scotch-Brite aluminum cleaner, rinsed it off, give it a good wipe down with acetone. I went to a lot more trouble than I usually do, and I wound up with some pretty darn clean aluminum. Problem is, it's a lot cleaner than most people deal with. But I just was experimenting, and so I thought I'd give it a try. You can see I've got a really sharp electrode going on there, and I, I usually leave them sharp while I'm putting tacks on corners like this. It gives me a nice crisp start. The arc doesn't wander around a whole lot like it does if I have a bald tip. Once I get things tacked up, though, I oftentimes will purposely ball the tip this Dynasty 280 actually has a ball setting on the AC balance. It puts a whole lot of cleaning into it. And I'll put it on a piece of copper or a big thick piece of clean aluminum. And I will give it just enough pedal to round the tip. I say ball the tip, but I'm not really putting a ball on it like a Tootsie Roll pop. Just rounding the tip, putting a nice smooth spherical ball even on the taper like that. And what that seems to do is give you a nice crisp startup at fairly low amperages and provide a little bit more cleaning action. That rounded tip seems to actually help the cleaning action. I'm going to be feeding wire just like you see me here today between my first two fingers. That's a whole trick that you need to practice if you're learning how to weld is feeding wire. Figure out a way to do it that works for you so that you can make long runs. First thing I'm going to do is get a tack, another tack, about three quarters of an inch inboard and the reason is because that tack on the very end if it pops loose when I melt it it could leave a gap and provide a problem it's just kind of a good little habit to get into when you're doing outside corner joints on boxes if you're fabricating an expansion tank or something like that just putting a tack inboard a little bit rather than rather than only one on the corner that you'll light up on because aluminum tacks are pretty weak and as soon as you light up on them and heat them up they, they get really weak and if there's any stress on them they can pop loose and you don't want that when you're welding you don't want to, to take a lot of care and get nice fit ups with no gaps and then all of a sudden open up a tack and then have a gap as I was watching this editing it I noticed I was doing a little lifting up as I dip rod and lengthening the arc basically as I push rod into the puddle and I don't, wasn't necessarily doing that intentionally but it is I guess a habit that I've gotten into that kind of helps me not clean up as many electrodes as I normally would. When you're pushing rod into a puddle it grows in height and that can push that puddle right into the tip of your electrode and so I kind of have a little habit of lengthening my arc as, I, as that puddle grows up and, uh, and tightening it up as I push the puddle forward. I'm using a number six cup with a stubby gas lens here. This is a 17 air-cooled style torch here. And uh, that's what I prefer if I'm using a gas lens usually with a stubby gas lens. I usually seem to go to a six. It lets me extend the electrode out a little bit further than a standard cup and that helps with filming. You'll notice kind of a long stick out on some of these shots. I'll, sh I'll, I'll point it out here when I when I show that again. But I'm doing the same thing here. I'm tacking it inboard about an inch or three quarters of an inch and then starting on the end and then welding over that tack. You'll see in just a, just a moment that I've got the electrode extended out about an eighth of an inch further than I usually do. And that's just mainly for filming. I don't need to have it extended out that far, but if the cup is blocking the puddle in the arc, that doesn't really help anybody on the video. So with the number six gas lens, it helps me extend it with still get, and still get good gas coverage. Helps me film. And if I don't need to film, I don't need to extend it out quite that far, and I usually don't. Now you don't always need a lot of penetration on an outside corner joint, but let's check the inside anyway. It punched through there pretty good. You know, the amount of penetration you need basically depends on the application. Depends on if the outside is going to be blended or sanded off. Just depends on the requirements. But on a joint like this, sometimes you need to weld the inside as well, especially if it's going to be sanded off to a, a radius on the outside. And in this case, I just want the practice. So I'm going over, basically welding an inside corner, welding right over that penetration there. And again, 
that number six stubby gas lens helps me extend the electrode just a little bit farther to get down in there. This is strictly practice. I picked up these uh, pieces of, I actually ordered a box of these pieces of aluminum angle just for projects and doing videos like this and it wound up being some pretty good training exercises for inside and outside corner joints. And notice this weld on the left here, it's got a whole different appearance. Can't really see the ripples very well and that's mainly because I didn't let it cool off much at all. Flipped it over and welded it and it, it really changes the appearance. So can't you can let aluminum get too hot, especially when you're practicing like this pad the bead exercise here. Incidentally, this is a this is an excellent exercise and it's really helpful to have two pieces of scrap side by side and you can weld a few beads on one and then let it cool off while you weld on the other. And this is a place to test things like how much to ball the electrode or practice with your filler wire hand, things like that. This is the best learning exercise when you're learning to weld aluminum that I know of. I call it the aluminum drill and it's nothing but padding beads on scrap aluminum. And once you pad a layer of beads like this, you can also go crossways. And it'll also train you that when you add more mass and more and more layers, it gets thicker and requires more heat. And then welding a bead on the edge like this requires a little bit less heat than anywhere else. So this will preheat the piece. It just teaches you all kinds of things. Mainly, it's just, it's just a lot of hood time, a lot of arc time with hardly any prep time. You don't have to wire brush it in between passes. You can just kind of go, you can change hands, get some left-handed practice. And like I mentioned before, you can you can get some practice on your filler wire hand, which is when you're learning to weld aluminum, that's, that's usually the speed bump. So it pays to practice just feeding the wire and, and welding a whole bunch of aluminum beads like this, one on top of another, is, is a really good way to get practice on it. This is kind of the way I do it. I grip it between those first two fingers, alternately pinch it with my thumb, and feed it a little bit of time and I can usually feed a whole rod like that fairly consistently. This is a number eight uh, clear Furic cup. It's called the 8 Pro. Uh, it's a great cup for me to use for, for videos like this to film because you can see through it. It's also a really good cup for aluminum all around. I don't use it all the time but it does help me see where I'm going these days. So again this is some of the best practice you can get. It helps you really come up to speed with your filler rod hand. Hope you enjoyed watching. If you're interested in any of these products, weldmonger.com. You can check out the Stubby Kit or the 8 Pro or any other stuff that I have. That's how I support these videos. So thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.